And so when you host people or when you're, you practice hospitality, to, uh, one category we're thinking about, it, or, or, am, I, am I allowing people to come into my home who are not like me, who are strangers, who are, who are maybe different? And then also, am I, am I hosting them in such a way that I would, uh, whether Christians or non-Christians, I don't know, that, or that I'm hosting them, am I doing it in such a way that I'm treating them like I would my family, or even better? Like my family, we get the fattened calf like once a year, like for, for guests, man, we're going we're gonna to roll out the red carpet. That's what hospitality, that's what Christian hospitality is. It, it's saying, hey, I, I don't know you, and you don't know me. And for some, you're passing through, let me host you, let me invite you in. And this is what we do every Sunday. We want to create an environment at, at, the, at church when we gather to, that's hospitable. Whether you are a Christian, non-Christian, whether your friends are Christian, whether your friends are non-Christian, whether you're visiting from out of town, or, you, or you've lived here your whole life. Like we want to be hospitable. And moreover, we want to not just practice hospitality here on a Sunday, but we want to do so in our homes throughout the week. And so... One of the qualifications, actually, for an elder in the New Testament is that the elder would be hospi- hospitable. So any of you guys who want to be an elder, or you want, to, you, want to, you want to be a pastor in the church, like, you have to be hospitable. It's one of the qual- character qualifications. Because it's an issue of the heart. It's not an issue of do you have money, do you have space, do you have land, do you have opportunity. The issue here is the issue of the heart. Like, I, I truly believe that, that hospitality, the, the practice of hospitality, exposes our heart. I mean, look at, ladies, how many of you are like, she's like needing bread? Like, she's starting from scratch. They killed, like, this seems like a lot. Like, Abram, why didn't you consult me on this? Right? Like, you met this, I get it, it's Jesus, but we didn't have a conversation. We didn't have a meeting. It was like, to, you told, the guy's already butchered the cow. Are we, we're doing this. And so what we see here is, 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 is Jesus and the angels are, are being recipients of this hospitality. He knows it's Jesus, but he doesn't know these two angels or, or angels. They think, he thinks they're regular men. In Hebrews 13, it actually references this, this scene. In Hebrews 13, it says that, that some of you in your hospitality you're actually entertaining angels and you don't even know it. You don't even know it. And so, Abram, what he is doing here is what, what we find Jesus doing with Zacchaeus in the New Testament. Jesus shows up and he says, he says hey, Zacchaeus, I'm here. I'm coming to your house today. What does Zacchaeus do? Zacchaeus, not a Christian. He's a tax collector, a sinner. He, the, the religious elite of the time would not have wanted uh, a guy like Zacchaeus, especially the Jews, would not have wanted Zacchaeus in their home. Jesus sees him, he's in a tree, we sing songs about him, and he says, uh, Zacchaeus, you come down, I'm not suggesting it, I'm not asking it, I'm telling you, I'm coming over for dinner. Imagine if Jesus shows up and says, hey, I'm coming over for dinner. Do you have the heart of hospitality that says, yes, Lord, come on, come on. In Revelation 3, we see that at the very, at the very end of time, uh, we see that in Revelation 3, that Jesus himself says, hey, I stand at the door. I'm at your house. And I knock. If anyone hears my voice, hey, let them open the door. Guess what? I'm going to come in and I'm going to eat with you like we're friends. We, we take the, the verse like Revelation 3, 20, and we, we say, we go like, well, this is God's at the door of your heart. He's just knocking. Like he's knocking the, to not just, and I get it, he's, he's knocking at the door of your heart. He wants to enter and he wants to feast with you. He wants to dine with you. Are you, hospi- he, are you hospitable? This is, we th- see this throughout the entire Old Testament and New Testament, this, this, this meals. We're going to take the Lord's Supper later. It's a meal. So many shared relationships can be had around meals and conversations can be had around meals. One of the, the authors of the New Testament described Jesus mostly as a man who came eating and drinking. They're like, we you know Jesus, he's the guy who's always eating, he's always drinking. He was never a, a, a glutton, he didn't overeat, he was never a drunkard, he didn't overdrink. But he was always around the party where they're eating and drinking. What does he show up here? He shows up. Hey, let's do this. Let's eat. Let's feast. 